Welcome to Little Dreamer's Adventures and welcome aboard again. Today I'm getting Little Dreamer prepared for her second trip out to Lake Erie. Next week Gretchen and I are going to take her out and we're going to leave from Catawba Island and sail up to Putin Bay, have a day on Putin Bay and then sail back. This is a short little sail but it's not as short as it seems. Um, so the preparations I have to do today include uh, checking the lights, make sure the lights are working, make sure the radio is working. Last time we pulled the mast down, I forgot to unhook the antenna cable and work to the end out, so I'm going to have to put that back on. But uh, most importantly um, is installing a new toy. I wouldn't exactly call it a toy, but uh, last year I found that um, with my trip out there that I was stuck to the tiller for four hours straight. Um, it wasn't a horrible situation, but um, it was kind of a rear pain in the rear. Like if I wanted to get something to drink and run down below, um, I had to tie a rope to the tiller, run down, come back as fast as I could, and uh, I banged myself up pretty good doing that a couple times all in a hurry. So by the time I get back, the uh, boat was off course by quite a bit. And when you're going in the wind, you really don't want to be getting off course because you could end up sideways into the wind with your full sails out and then on your side if you don't have time to adjust your sails. So to remedy that problem this year I bought this. This is a Raymarine ST1000 Plus Auto Tiller and today we're going to install this. Um, I'll go through it step by step um, and uh, we'll start by let's throw this out we don't need this right? Nope. Actually, this is really important. You do need the instructions on this. <laughs> There's a very particular way this has to be installed and set up. And uh, if you don't follow this, you're going to have a mess. So, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to measure out 18 inches from the center of the rudder pivot point. So our rubber pivot point is right here. Pretty much right in the middle of this knot here is the rubber, rudder pivot, pivot point. So we're gonna mark out 18 inches in the center. And that is where we're going to put our pin. We're going to drill this out and epoxy our pin in there. Now, the other measurement that is critical here is from this point, from this point to the other pin on the other end of the uh, auto tiller is 23 and a quarter inches. So we need to measure that out also. And I gotta figure out where that falls from the side of the boat. So we wanna go 23 and a quarter inches. And then, yeah, gotta do this with two tape measures. Cause I'm gonna have to also measure from the side of the boat. So we got our 23 and a quarter inches. And then from the side of the boat, we basically need to be two and a half inches from the inside of the boat there. So that's my critical measurement. And we'll remeasure this after the, the bracket's already mounted and I'll drill the hole after I've mounted the bracket to make sure we get this really super accurate. So other problem we have here is off the top of the boat, um, to the top of this because the uh, edge of the boat's lower. So we got three and a half inches here, and this is about a half inch higher than there. So our bracket's going to have to be about four inches off the top of the uh, off the top of the boat there, of the edge of the gunnel. So now comes the planning stage. We need to uh, drop a plan. Um, people like to build out of different things. Um, it's been suggested to me that marine board is probably the best thing to use in this case, but 
ring gourd board is very expensive. So I, I may eventually build this out of marine board, but to be honest, I like wood. I, I like the look of wood, and um, although this wood needs to be sanded and refinished, and that might be something to do over the winter, I'll probably take some of the wood off this winter and redo it and get her all cleaned up so the next season we have real pretty wood on here. Um, so that's what I'm going to make it out of. I like to start out by drawing up the plan of my project, as I've done here. As you can see, I have made some changes to the plan after rechecking my measurements. The first step is to draw out my parts on the board. Remember, measure twice, cut once. After the parts are cut, I take a rasp and clean up the burrs off the edges. I pre-drill all the screw holes so that the board does not split when I screw it together. to the backing. Here's the mounting bracket without the top plate attached. Two of the screws go all the way through the bracket at its skinniest point. So I take a hacksaw and cut them off flush. The side of the boat, also known as the gunnel, is at an angle, so I cannot make the top plate 90 degrees to the backing plate. The best way to get the correct angle is to hold the bracket in place and mark the angle. Back at the garage, I use a Sawzall to cut the angle for the top plate. The 
This is where the bushing for the auto tiller will be mounted. Before mounting the bracket, I'm going to lay out the holes for the mounting screws and drill them out. Set the bracket into place and mark out the mounting holes before drilling them out to clearance through the side of the gunnel. I drill out the top two holes so that I can see where the bracket will be from the inside. I used Gorilla Glue 5 minute epoxy on the backing board to hold it in place while I pre-drill and then screw the bracket on with stainless lag screws. The backing board takes the stress off of the fiberglass sides. While under the deck, I can see why the stern light is not working. Too bad I did not bring some wire nuts down with me. Guess I'll have to come back down to this tight spot again. Once the epoxy has set, I gently pre-drill the pilot holes for the lag screws. Then bolt the top two screws up. up the top two screws, I drilled out the bottom holes and ran the lag bolts in making a very solid mounting bracket. Now that the bracket is mounted, I use my two foot square to mark where to put the brass bushing. The instructions say to drill the hole for the tiller pin to a depth of one inch. I put tape on the drill bit to help me to gauge the depth of the hole. fits perfectly. I will epoxy it in before putting the auto tiller on it. With the pin and the brass bushing epoxied in and curing, it is time to put the electrical in. The instruction book comes with a drill template for the watertight plug. I taped it into place and drill through the template. I ran the wire through the center hole and connected it to the plug. It is important to connect to the proper pins. There is a notch in the plug and the instructions show the pins in relation to the notch. I only need the power pins for this installation. The power port has a waterproof cover to keep the plug safe when not in use. The auto tiller is now mounted and functioning perfectly. The auto 
Auto Tiller works simply by getting on your course, then pressing Auto. The Auto Tiller will then steer the boat and keep it on the compass heading that it was on when you pressed Auto. You can also adjust the heading using a plus or minus 1 degree and 10 degree button. I will need to calibrate it later by taking the boat in a circle that takes approximately 3 minutes. Right now the tiller is off by about 10 degrees. I did get the lights fixed and with the auto tiller installed we are ready for our Lake Erie trip next week. Thank you for watching Little Dreamers Adventures. Please subscribe to our channel and keep watching for more.